last night, the game itself. And it, it, I, I felt bad for the folks on the Amazon Prime post game show because on one hand, you're trying to celebrate the Bills. On the other hand, you got this serious news issue. And it, it was a strange dichotomy, to say the least. But the Bills got a win, a huge win, just four days after coming from behind to beat a Cardinals team that many thought they would dominate. The Bills go to a place where they knew the stakes. The Dolphins knew the stakes, even though it's only week two. Huge game. And the Bills were very opportunistic. They took advantage of the opportunities they got via short fields, thanks to three Tua Tonga Vailoa interceptions. The dagger came with the pick six after, you know, the Bills were held in the third quarter. And now it could get interesting at 24-10, just like that is 31-10. And it felt like it was over at that point. All right, uh, Florio, I I told you before uh, the show that I always uh, text Sims when you guys are on the air. I'm always talking to Sims. I don't know if I texted him yesterday. When did you make your picks? I think he picked Miami. Did he pick Miami to win the game? He did. He did. Uh, I did not. Okay. This this is my – I know you didn't. This is my text to Chris Sims. What are you thinking? (laughs) I mean, what, what are you doing? Look, Mike, uh, yesterday was as predictable as uh, the sun in Miami. I mean, come on. It's, it's really not a contest between the Bills. I'm going to go. I'm going to take it a, a little further. It's not a contest between the Bills and anybody else in the AFC East. I think they're clearly the class of the division. Now they've won 12 of their last 13 against Miami. It's just a it's just a bad matchup for Miami, and I think they are physically overwhelmed by Buffalo most of the time. But I think uh, psychologically, you say it's only week two, but if you're Miami, this is a continuation. All those guys who have been there before, this is a continuation of previous beatdowns, the hands of the Buffalo Bills. They just know how to approach the Dolphins, whether the Dolphins are coached by Brian Flores or uh, Mike McDaniel. It doesn't matter. Um, it's a, it's, this is their division. This is their division. And as Sean McDermott said in that clip that we played off the top, this was their game. It's always their game when they play the, the Miami Dolphins. And, and when I think about it, it, it makes a lot of sense because if you look at, if you look at the the most important people in the division, or, excuse me, in the, in the organization. Look at the AFC East. Buffalo clearly has the best combo of important people. So head coach, general manager. The Jets have Robert Sala and Joe Douglas. The Patriots have Gerard Mayo and Elliot Wolf. Um, the Dolphins have Mike McDaniel and... Uh, Chris Greer, and Buffalo has Sean McDermott there for a long time, along with Brandon Bean, not to mention they got the best quarterback in the division. So if you really just break it out, longevity, performance, playoff victories, and I know Buffalo was seen as a national, like nationally they're a little disappointing, maybe their window is closed, I don't know. In the division, There's no disappointment. There's no doubt in my mind. I think they win the division again. And I think the next time they play Miami, I think they win that game as well. And and Michael, I think the perception was the defense isn't as good as it needs to be. Well, it looks pretty good with a healthy Von Miller and Gregory Russo on the verge of becoming a superstar. And yeah, they had guys leave on the back end, but sometimes those guys leave because it's time and they move forward with guys that they know they can reload with. But the defense looks pretty good. And all the consternation about Stephon Diggs and Gabe Davis leaving, first of all, they were not throwing the ball to Stephon Diggs much at all down the stretch last year. This isn't like taking Randy Moss and his prime off of the Vikings. Stephon Diggs had cycled through his relevance to the Bills by the time we got to the end of last season. Gabe Davis never lived up to the promise that we saw the night he scored four touchdowns against the Chiefs in that classic divisional round game. So as long as you got Josh Allen, there are plenty of guys out there that can run routes, get open, and catch passes. There aren't many Josh Allens out there. And he had a throw last night. There's a like, holy crap. I mean, there's a thousand guys that can make that catch. There's one or two guys that can make that throw. 
that's the Bills' ace in the hole, and that's why they're 2-0, and and that's why they're going to keep winning games as long as he's healthy. He's not, as long as that left hand that had that big giant glove on it, like the old cartoon when you know somebody would blow into their thumb and their hand would explode, uh, I don't know what he had stuffed in that <laughs> glove, but you know, as long as he's healthy, they'll be fine. Right. Somebody else, uh, somebody else besides me uh, spent a lot of time watching Saturday morning cartoons back oh, yeah. in the day. Thank you for that reference. I appreciate it. I- I'm right. There I got a good Saturday. I-, I got a good Saturday says- morning cartoon story for you that I've told on the show before. I'll tell you some other time when we're having a conversation. You'll both like it and be horrified by it. But go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Okay. Oh, now, now I'm intrigued. Now I'm intrigued. I can't, that, that is a professional tease if I've ever heard one. <laughs> and, you know, all the other all the things you mentioned about Buffalo, Mike, there's another one. There's another dimension, and this is huge if you are a Josh Allen, protect Josh Allen guy. Well, you look at Joe Brady, what he can now put in his uh, offensive coordinator repertoire is that He's got a lot of running backs that he can go to with different skill sets. You know, you saw uh, Cook last night with his three touchdowns. So he is an elusive, fast, I mean, just kind of just one of those backs. Not a bulky guy, but can do a lot of things. So you got that guy. Ray Davis, what an addition for Buffalo. A small guy, but stout, can uh, run between the tackles. And then they have Ty Johnson as a third down back. The point is... They don't have to just say, okay, it's third and short. Hey, Josh, take the ball and just run up the middle. I mean, he can do that. They don't have to do it. I think this is probably the most complete running back group they've had in Buffalo. And all of these guys complement each other. They make a lot of sense. I I think um, the offense, even with, with the loss of Diggs, I think the offense is better. I think you're absolutely right. And I want to flip it over to Tua. It's difficult to criticize his play that preceded the injury. But the three interceptions that he threw, and I guess beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and you can have reasonable minds differ on whose fault each one is. The first one, the ball was delivered behind the receiver when it caromed off of his shoulder pads into the hands of a Bills defender. The second one, I heard a suggestion last night that maybe Robbie Anderson, Chosen Anderson, ran the wrong route. Unless the route was go deep and climb a ladder, I don't know that that you know it would have been his fault because that just looked like a misfire. And the last one was just a failed effort to get rid of the football. He didn't have the arm strength to get the ball out of bounds when he was gobbled up by the defensive line. And you can't blame, well, this guy's injured, that guy's injured – you got to make quicker decisions, better decisions about what to do to get rid of the football. So you're not in that spot where you're just saying, I got to get rid of this ball because the walls have closed in. All three of those. You could, yeah, and and I'm sure there's plenty of blame that you can apportion if you study the film. But boy, they sure look like just bad decisions and bad throws by the guy who had the football in his hands. Yeah, the the one, the, the, the arm, let's call it the arm strength interception. That one will drive a coach crazy and probably drives two a crazy and he goes back and, and looks at the film. That's just one of those where you got to know you got to know the situation and you got to know what you can do. I, I saw that, Mike. I said, what is he doing? It's a it, it would be a big loss, but you sit there and you, you, you take the uh, you take the sack and you take the huge loss. But that was just. Even if you have the arm strength to do that, that's such a risky throw. Uh, the, the the negatives far outweigh the positives, all the negative things that can happen. I mean, it's that throw, that's like a textbook, oh, wow, what the hell. It's almost like those, uh, those, those plays sometimes where the quarterback will fall down untouched, get back up, and then try to throw the ball. Generally, bad things happen on that one, too, unless you're Patrick Mahomes and you make magic out of it. But generally, those plays, those plays are going to be exactly that either an almost interception or an interception. Yeah, and I can't think of many guys other than Mahomes and Josh Allen who didn't even have a chance of getting that ball to where Tua Tonga-Vailoa was trying to put it when when he was heading toward the ground uh, with the attempted sack. All right, let's take a break. When we return, our Friday morning staple, not to be confused with the Saturday morning cartoons, Friday morning, show me something draft for week two. That's next on PFT Live.
Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.